Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and this episode we're going to talk about Lockheed Martin's Mars Base Camp concept as modeled by Lonesome Robots. Now over on the left side we see the Mars Ascent Descent Vehicle MADV that I featured in a previous video also by Lonesome Robots but that is not part of the mod that I'm talking about right now so let's uh, remove that. Uh, so yes uh, we have this, and the Ryan module here is actually from a different mod pack. Uh, it is from, I believe, the SLS Space Launch System mod pack. But uh, any, Mar uh, any Orion module will do, and there is one from Lonesome Robots, though I don't have a Realism Overall configuration for that, I don't believe. So I'll probably work on that. Uh, these soul panels are from the Lonesome Robots pack for the Mars Base Camp. So there's the Lonesome Robots Mars Base Camp pack. And I have made realism overall configurations for them. Let's talk about what that entails. Uh, so here we have the MBC structural module. And you can find all the packs, assuming you're using my configuration for this, um, here by typing in MBC. And uh, the structural module goes here. These docking ports, you'll have to decide what docking ports you want. There are Hoyo docking ports from Lonesome Robots that will work with Lonesome Robots. Uh, Orion spacecraft, so you might want to use those, or you might want to use like this NASA docking system I have here, which happens to match the one on the top of the Orion spacecraft from this particular module. So that's why I put those there. Uh, so you can place whatever docking ports you want there. And then the next part is the science lab. And the science lab mass you can see is 12.5 tons, which I felt was reasonable. It has some space for supplies, uh, though not much. It comes with an oxygen tank, uh, not necessarily filled up, but you might want to toss in some food, water, and oxygen in there as well, uh, just a little bit, but uh, probably you'll want to dock another supply vessel to this. This uh, area does not have enough space for all the supplies you need to go to, Mar uh, to, go to Mars, so you're going to have to figure that out separately, and that's why we have these docking locations here. Uh, these tanks here surround a habitat module. You can see there is a MBC command module here. The tanks are built into the command module. So it looks like this. And this is only 7.1 tons uh, because the, I mean, the tanks aren't that heavy. And this is basically a crew tube. But um, altogether, it has room for... Well, right now it's configured as service module. You can change that to whatever tank, well, not whatever tank type. There's default, cryogenic, fuselage, structural, and electric propulsion. Um, and uh, electric propulsion will not allow you to put food, water, and oxygen in this bit for uh, that, but that's not a problem because you should have it in here or on some other module anyway. Uh, but uh, it, yeah, it's up to you what kind of tank, uh, realism overall tank type you would like. I've got by default on um, service module and we are going to put in xenon gas because my intention is to rather than have the Mars Ascent De Descent Vehicle dock on this side probably have an ion propulsion module dock on this side and use the xenon gas to push us around you know to Mars and back kind of thing and then uh, Mars Ascent Descent Vehicle can dock to one of these docking ports. So yeah, uh, that's that part right there. And you can see that with the xenon gas, the dry mass is 7.7 .7 tons, wet mass 59 tons. So you're carrying 54 tons of xenon gas, uh, sorry, 52.5 tons, oh wait, uh, around 52 tons of xenon gas. So, uh, and uh, that is the correct volume. I use the procedural tanks to, and size them to make sure that they're the right volume. All these parts are scaled up from Lonesome Robots default by a factor of 1.33. So that seems to fit things. For instance, uh, this stage here we can see fits a service module from a different pack. And uh, this is where it's supposed to go, below the service module for Orion. And we'll see that work. You might have to tweak it up or down a bit like this to make sure it fits. Also, uh, this mod pack, the Mars Base Camp pack, does have this alternate service module engine here uh, that I'm using here, though you could use that on this stage as well. That's up to you. But right now it is on this stage and using MMH and MON3. 
So it's configured as if it was four AJ10190 engines instead of the usual one engine that this service module has by default. So that is its configuration and it has 100 ignitions. So there you go. And basically it has enough, uh, about the same thrust as the Apollo service module. But as you can see, when I uh, add that on there, it sort of clips in, so tweak it out a little bit. And again, these service, uh, sorry, these solar panels are from the MBC pack. Note, it is work in progress RO. That means please contribute your comments and suggestions for how to make this better. There's also this CEV adapter um, that's at the bottom of this to adapt it to a different launch vehicle. Um, I'm not going to use that uh, for our launch. We will try and launch these modules and see what happens. Uh, down here, what we have are two basically RL10 engines. They're common extensible cryogenic engines. I introduced these engines uh, with the Mars Ascent Descent vehicle. So it's the same engines, and that'll be good for consistency's sake. And so they're Hydro Hydrolox engines, and this is a Hydrolox stage by default. And it is 32 tons. Dry mass 1.6 tons, so very good efficiency there. Uh, it has Hydrolox RCS, uh, though I don't know why three separate, R it's complicated. Um, uh, now, I've said to a service module tank, so it's minimum um, boil off, but might want to add radiators. And technically, I think these panels are supposed to go on here, but I'm not entirely sure. So, yeah. Uh, Maybe actually adding a docking port to the top of this and using it as a tug is a good idea and then adding radiators and all that business uh, to limit boil off. Basically treat it like an ACES stage uh, so that it's like a reusable tug kind of thing. Uh, the engines, I believe, have uh, 60, 60 ignitions for the CC high. I forget. It doesn't say here, which is interesting. It doesn't have that uh, engine configuration thing because there's only one configuration. Okay, the solar panels are here, and you can see they sort of, uh, according to the Lockheed Martin images, they go between this tank and that tank, and they give us 8.1 kilowatts apiece. That's what you're going to get for your solar electric propulsion. Maybe might want to have extra solar panels to really drive the ion engines, but right now we've got 32 total so far kilowatts. And then we have radiators here, which also come with the pack. I don't know if they'll work properly for controlling boil off. Um, they're ammonia radiators. And um, yeah, the I, this part, the xenon, if you're putting xenon gas in here, probably you don't need to worry about cooling it. But if you decide, for instance, to remove these tanks and put hydrogen and oxygen in, instead, which actually they're, they're sort of shaped for. I mean, you can see these round ones are sort of oxygen shaped and in these larger ones more like hydrogen shaped but anyway um, you can go ahead and change that and maybe you'll need the radiators to cool them off and make sure that there isn't any boil off so it all retracts and we can fit them the diameter of this is pretty wide you can see Orion is already more than five meters wide here so this is more than seven meters wide which means that maybe you can fit it on top of a Blue Glen, but basically it's sized to be launched on an SLS. So, sorry, New Glen, not Blue Glen. Blue Origin, New Glen. Uh, so, New Glen can launch uh, this portion here if you don't fuel up the Xenon gas, obviously. 59 tons would be too much. But, uh, yeah, it can launch uh, the rest of this. Not, not all of this. It would be able to launch, let's say... Okay, so let's say this bit, 23.9 tons. So you could probably uh, send this up, add some supplies in here, maybe put in some xenon gas, and New Glenn would be able to carry that to low Earth orbit. Or higher if you don't have any xenon gas at all. So yeah, that's an option. But basically we're looking at an SLS launch unless we have some way of having a cargo version of um, which got uh, the BFR ship. So, yep, well, let's go ahead and go to the launch pad and launch some stuff. Okay, so here we have an SLS core plus boosters, but not the second stage of the SLS. Instead, we are going to be using that tank 
with the two RL10 style engines at the bottom of it, the CC highs, and uh, of course the tank from the mod, the Lonesome Robots mod, sized for realism overhaul, of course. Uh, RCS ISP being 105.6, okay, that's right, because it's sea level. And so, yeah, uh, look good hydrogen and oxygen. And the goal is to send Orion to the moon and uh, make orbit around the moon and return. But I'm not going to go through the entire mission. We're just going to see that it is possible. Uh, so, yeah, and make sure nothing is wrong with the mod, which is entirely uh, likely that there's something wrong. And if you do have any problems with it, do tell me so I can make fixes. Uh, because I don't know all situations with this thing. So anyway, we are not lined up with the moon at all. And that will just be part of the test. Now it's interesting, the launch script is expecting having an upper stage. And currently it does not have one. In fact, uh, I, uh, this should be able to get to orbit without using the upper stage at all. The Orion uh, Command and Service Module plus this tank and the RL-10s only comes out to be about 56 tons. Now it does occur to me that this payload, as opposed to the rest of the Mars Base Camp, can be launched on New Glenn. Basically, the stage up here will have to finish orbit, though, because New Glenn doesn't have the capacity to bring 56 tons to orbit, but it doesn't need to because this stage can finish orbit. If we take a look at its delta-v, it's got 3,560 meters per second, which means that it could use 400 and still have enough delta-v in order to transfer Orion over to the moon. But we'll have to test that. Maybe New Glenn can manage it, maybe it can't, maybe it'll have to be in expendable mode, I don't know. Okay, booster separation. Okay, well, we're gonna accidentally bring up the core stage here if we continue like this. So maybe I should stop the launch scripts uh, and use the upper stage to finish things off at the appropriate time, let's see. Okay, that'll do. Alright, separation. Alright, and let's check the RCS out. Do we, well, Coral's down. Um, activate. Mm, that's not the RCS I wanted. Uh, enable, enable. Okay, there we go. Good. Uh, point progress, please. And let's actually lock this fuel. Let's see. Well, I don't know. Right now, it doesn't look like I've got uh, limited ignitions configured on this. So it does have throttling. The CC did have throttling, the common extensible cryogenic engine. I think it's supposed to have 50 ignitions. OK, that will be good enough. And as you can see, 56 tons in orbit. Uh, how are we recharging? Mm, yeah, it looks topped off. Good. So that's nominal. So, let's just have MechJab do a uh, maneuver plan, home and transfer to the moon. Oh, it might not be able, well, let's see. Oh, relative inclination is not that bad. Yep, okay, it's got one. Let me fine tune that. And actually, this will give us a chance to test boil off, because it's an hour and 21 minutes. We probably should have just kept burning, but let's take a look at the liquid hydrogen uh, hydrogen and let's turn off the RCS because otherwise it's going to use some. There is some boil off. We've got 3,517 meters per second. Let's see how much it is when it comes time to burn. Well, uh, 3,508. So we lost about 9 meters per second in an hour and a half, let's say. Is there a reaction wheel somewhere in here? I'll have to check that, because it just turned to prograde without any help. Right, there's no RCS on. Let's see. Not there. Not there. Oh, there, there are reaction wheels in... Well, that's not part of the mod that... I did not configure that. So, <laughs> I, I'm not responsible for that section. So each of these engines outputs uh, 110 kilonewtons. And you can see 460 seconds of ISP. 
This is basically a big centaur stage. Well, I'm not going to belabor the point. The parts that I've configured for the Mars Base Camp mod from Lonesome Robots, configure them for Realism Overhaul, are working as intended on this launch. And if we do unlock this fuel, uh, we see that that stage has about 1,500 meters per second, which Orion does, which leaves us 700 to make orbit around the moon and 700 to break orbit. That's a little bit tight and probably only gets it into high orbit. If you use some of this fuel to help get into orbit, then you can manage it. Um, it's up to you exactly how you want to deal with the fact that uh, the Orion service module doesn't actually have as much delta V as I would like it to have for lunar operations. It is more meant for transfers up to a Lagrange point kind of thing. I don't know exactly what they, why they packed uh, this particular amount of fuel in here. It's always troubled me, but anyway, uh, let's get on with the other launch. This will be able to get to the moon without any problems, and so, yeah. Let's test the larger portion of this mod. Okay, this time we have an SLS Block 1B, so this time we do have an upper stage, the EUS, and that's for RL-10s, and that's because, in this case, we are not carrying another stage in the fairing here. Instead, what we're carrying is the Mars Base Camp modules with Orion. So this is sort of like bringing up a mini Skylab or some sort of space station along with the crew, uh, crew craft for it. We are not doing Mars operations with it yet, you'll notice. That takes a little bit more doing, and I, I would also like to leave it to viewers to try and figure out how they want to do that without telling them right away. Eventually I'll send these modules out to Mars, but I would like to offer the RO configurations without... Oh, apparently I've got a role configuration error here. That should, should be alright though. It just means we'll be oriented... We are oriented a little bit differently than we ought to be. Anyway, but yeah. I would like to just uh, leave you guys some time to mess with that on your own without seeing how I manage it. Alright, getting ready for booster separation here. Not oriented the way I want to be oriented, but that's how it's shaked up. bit lopsided because they're not supposed to separate in this particular plane, but should be okay. The reason boosters sometimes don't go off symmetrically is if the craft is continually pitching down, which is true of SLS right now, uh, the KOS script is sort of smoothly pitching down, and while if, it's, uh, if the boosters separate while it's pitching down, of course, there's going to be some lopsidedness between the top and bottom booster. Okay, preparing for staging. Staging. And that's just something to do with this particular model. And ignition sometime soon. Ooh. I'll have to extend the nozzles here. Okay, making orbit here. that's orbit 213 by 175 we have most of the stage left I don't know if it could transfer all of this over to the moon this seems to claim so but keep in mind we have an under fueled service module here and of course no fuel in the Mars base camp so if we did transfer this to the moon we would lack any ability to get into orbit around the moon or return so uh, the service module is not going to be powerful enough to get the Mars base camp into orbit around the moon, so we can't really transfer all of this to the moon. Anyway, uh, let's... Hmm... How do I want to do this? Well, let's separate those fairings first. It's fine. Okay, so this is what we have in here. We've got that, and of course, the Mars base camp bit does not have any RCS right now. I could have put RCS, but I didn't. And uh, let's have the stage hold on to it for a sec while we redock. We're going to... Oh, I wish I didn't have that shroud. Oh boy. I don't know how that's going to work for us. Open? 
Hmm. I don't know if I've connected this properly. I thought I could just undock it from that node because that's a docking port. There's a docking port down here. But it doesn't seem to work that way, huh? Jettison Shroud is probably gonna... No, it's not gonna cause any problems. Yeah, I thought I would just be able to directly undock from here. But that does not seem to be the case. So we're all connected now. <laughs> Despite my... My hopes and dreams. Okay, well I was trying to get into daylight, but it started with electricity running out. That's very interesting. I wonder what's drawing 167... Oh, probably the science lab? No. Okay, well something's been depleting our electric charge. Oh, the radiators probably. Let's not do that. Is that right? Oh, these radiators have a lot of... Okay, so warning. Radiators have a lot of power draw. Maybe... Maybe we need to work on that. Okay. Now we should be good. I don't actually know how much power radiators are supposed to need, but wow, our electric charge recouped very quickly. Um, let's see what the balance is when we're in daylight here. Let me extend the radiator. Check whether the solar panels are enough to charge up with the radiators deployed. Okay, well now it seems balanced. I don't know. Uh, I'll have to do more testing on that and work on it. Okay, turn prograde, please. So anyway, this is how it is. And right now we're at 44 tons, mainly because there's no xenon gas or fuel in this module here. And uh, of the mass, probably half of it is, well, a little bit less than half of it is Orion and its service module. And the remainder is this assembly down here. And so there you go. Anyway, the Mars Base Camp mod from Lonesome Robots, modified by me for Realism Overhaul. And in the comments, if you have any problems or uh, thoughts about the configuration, please uh, mention them. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.